I apply heat around there as well to where I've lightly worked on the neck and the root of the neck that helps to liquefy the stuff that I've deserved, uh, that disturbed. Then after that I then work on the head. Here when we see a normal skull we have two very fine ridges going through there. Well the detectus comes out of the mastoid and or the sagittal rather, and the fontanelles. Those two ridges drain down towards the supraorbital fissure in here is the supraorbital fissure is in there. You can feel that can't you? I can. Yeah. Now that drains down there and that goes in. We have another drainage here, the caruncle and the caruncular lacrimatus. The caruncle is that little knob in the corner and the caruncular lacrimatus is like a little Y going over that to drain into the infraorbital, I'm trying to find it, it's in there, underneath, feel this Heather, because this is important, in there, run your finger over the head, in there, and you will feel like a little Rubbery park, plaque, where that infraorbital fissure is. We start here. There are two bony ridges, a very tiny, but just below the sagittal suture and the two fontanelles, anterior, posterior. These, I have seen them, are called retroauricular plexuses, but they are the fontanelles behind the ears. These are the fontanelles in front of the ears, up here at the temporal, where the temporal arch is in there. So what I do with this, when I feel what's there, what's there, what's around the side, I start up here, I use the pads of the fingers, I never use the tops, only if I find that there is a crevice, I have to go down, but normally clockwise, anti-clockwise, over the scalp because at this stage see where the hair is receding hair that is at the end of those two little uh, bony ridges they guide the detritus to come out of the sagittal suture the fontanelle sutures from the arachnoid spaces inside the skull and over the brain itself. In that sagittal um, arachnoid space, we have granulations. And it appears to me that the granulations are there to help liquefy the amyloid protein, which is a fatty, starchy um, liquid, or protein rather, 
and it helps to drain out. Well then, if there's any blockages here caused by a blow or an accident or whatever, if those drainages are blocked up, we get headaches and it has been reported that the brain shrinks. Now, the only conclusion I can come to the strength shrinkage is that the heart with a cardiac cycle beats on an average of 72 to 80 beats a minute. And the outward pressure after the heart, after the brain has absorbed all the nutrients and shed any dead cells, it only takes five or six beats a minute for that fluid to be disposed of through the outlets here. Now, if you've got the blockage, you've got the blood coming in 72 to 80 times a minute, and it's only coming out five or six beats a minute. My conclusion is, or observation is, that whatever is inside that skull would have to shrink. Now I'm going around the edge of the front of the old. And down here at the occipital parietal sutures, sometimes when there's a blockage there, it's, yeah, does that hurt? Good. Because in some patients, if I did that, that would paralyze the pain, it would go straight into the pain and cause a paralysis momentarily because once you release it or you just hold it until that nerve comes back to its proper um, force. A sympathetic nerve is supposed to go 20, 120 meters a second. A parasympathetic is 05 a second. Now down here, Arnie, I felt something. Can you feel that? That's above where they cut. Mm. Now that downward drainage to that fontanelle yeah. has been interrupted by the blockage and it has formed a lump there. And that has progressed down to what they operated on here. Yes. Then you work, you go a little bit deeper now. I am going between the muscles and I found where there is a calcification a bit deeper. Down, feel it. Yes. In there. Yeah. Now we come up here. This I have to find when you are supine on the table because I have to get underneath the skull to relieve the pressure mm. and the calcification around the roots of the scalene and the lateral scapulae. We've got the trapezium there. I'm just going over that lightly to help the fluid go down from what I've disturbed on the head. Turn around the other way. Yeah, 
Okay, I've heard the fine procedure for this side. We find, examine, find the lamp. There's one. And down here, we go down between the spine and the rudder and the tracheas. Uh, epiglottis again. That is where the lordotic curve is. That would hurt mm. in there. And at times it will make you cough. Because feel those vessels down at the root of the neck, over the manubrium, they are affected by blockage. Feel it? Mm -hmm. In here, that you work backwards and forwards on there. Yeah, we didn't find that so much on that side as yeah. what I do here. And you work more until you get what you could feel a bit of relief through there. And then you can come up underneath the skull, the mastoid, where the sternocleidomastoid muscle is. You can feel there is a blockage between the muscle fibres that attaches to the manubrium. You feel it? Mm -hmm. See. Just not grimacing for the camera. Work. <laughs> Refuse to yield. Now we can come up here and I work here. We've got the same little ridges. Now if that has slowed down to a rubbery substrate. You can feel it's like it's soft, but it's not moving. Now here, we've got the supraorbital fissure. That is an opening between the frontal bone and the orbit. And that drains obliquely behind the or through between the sinuses down to the pharyngeal tonsil. Now, you work here clockwise, anti-clockwise. By working flat fingers, you do not dig that waste out to cause an overload. Yeah, not clear. Feel it? <coughs> there, you, there it is. There you feel it? Mm -hmm. They have the things you look for. Right. You've had a hit on the head there. Oh, yeah, a few nasty ones. Have you ever played football? Um, yeah, I did rugby a bit. Basketball, a bit of boxing. Uh, now, we're doing the same on this side as what I did on the left side. And I'm looking for anything unusual. to that if I hold the head patient can't drive you away from me that so you hold it and you can get the results that you want now honey this is the 
rectangular fontanelle. And you can feel there is a little bit of problem there on the right side. Now we come in towards the pillar and there is a suture between the mastoid and the temporal bone. And here you have a little bit of a problem that feels like a rubbery vessel gut in it. <coughs> underneath the mastoid and around the root of the clidomastoid and that also goes obliquely down to the pharyngeal tonsil in, in there. Then you work is to help clear or take the pressure off of the head so that you can show a better response on where else I work. Because if you've got the blockage on the head and I start to work here and that still can't get down, that gives you a lot of pain. Then you work around, you work around the shoulder, the acromioclavicular joint. You've got a bit of trouble in there. And you work down where the radialis medialis nerve goes down and over they branch out and their twigs that service the muscles. the both sides, clear the both sides, they feel that, there it is, yeah you've got more there than what you've got there, this is what a practitioner has to find, yeah. whether we have the most sore pressure is or the larger lumps. And you then go down on the rib cage. Lift your arm a little bit, that's right. Now, here I am working on the intercostal muscles because they are in between. It's like a letter V and the nerve the blood vessel and the lymphatic vessel go between those V muscle inner and median and lateral. And you bring that right around from where the rib cage starts and you bring it around to the upper drainage that comes from the coccyx. Now here, generally, we feel pain. This gives us the upper back pain. Because there, the movement of the scapula also inhibits the free flow at times. And you can see So you take that back You go right down to the 12th rib We have the axillary plexus, 
where that fluid that comes from the diaphragm up through the inframammary goes into those axillaries where it's fractionalized, liquefied and neutralized and it goes through under the pectoral muscles through there up into the subclavian vein. But if we've got a blockage, we look there, that prevents, feel it, that prevents that sort of second fluid from going into the subclavian. It comes into the parasternals, below the manubrium, into the parasternals, past the forward zone, down through, and there is a plexus inside of the umbilicus, and then vessels from there down to the inguinals. If there's a blockage there, you're in trouble up here as well. Yeah, the other way. Same procedure. Working this way, I am helping to liquefy that block drainage. I flat hand down, but pull deep towards the drainage vessel. If you have a sedentary job where you're sitting for hours at a time on computer or typewriter or whatever, the strain of the weight of that head on those tired muscles helps to slow down the drainage. Yeah, get on the table. Now through here. And uh, Gastrocnemius on top of thalamus. I find in some patients that there is an obstruction forming there from the blockage at the knee and the peroneal nerve plus the sciatic nerve. And I felt from one patient that that particular lump was about the size of a walnut and very hard. Now the downward drainage is here. It goes around the malleolus alongside of the calcaneum and 
three intestines of a Achilles. Achilles. Achilles tendon. Now yeah, the Achilles tendon, they are here. This patient has a hardening through here. He would also feel it. And down through here, around the calcaneum, both sides. There's a blockage forms there with a calcification, like a little vein, also here, and that affects the navicular cuboid and tellus that those small pains on top of the calcaneum up into the malleolus. Yeah, through here we work through the sheath in the bones, tassels, and that helps to clear the drainage both ways top of the foot and the bottom. And that goes between the toes because we have four drainages of four feeding vessels going into the toes up to the first digit. Here is where the sciatic nerve finishes. We've got the I know it, but I've forgotten it. See that, the plate there sends that impulse that comes from the brain down to innervate that part of the foot. It sends that used impulse back to the brain to be discharged so that the ventral can send another impulse. This is where we get our pain. As for instance, here or up here or in there, in there. If there's any blockage in the upward or downward drainage we get that nerve pain. Mm. This is where we get the crab. Well, they call it spasms, don't they? Right. It's a little bit frightened of me, I think. He's holding tense his muscles. Here we got the adductor hiatus, where the upper drainage, as it comes through, it goes up, then it comes around, here to go down, and then it goes through to the upper drainage, which goes around the malleolus. The upper drainage is here, through the roots of these muscles, to a plexus 
what we call the adductor hiatus in the uh, sometimes that forms a lump about the size of a wall an almond and we've got the root of the gratulous muscle here which is alongside of the adductor hiatus now this muscle this vessel rather comes through goes through the adductor hiatus up to the perineum and there should be I'm looking for a vessel feels like a strip of rubber here at the symphysis pubis the gratulous muscle in the middle, right on the symphysis pubis. This vessel is the inguinal posterior to the uh, gratulus and the one from the outside comes through and around the front under the ligament into the um, adductor hiatus and it goes here posterior to the uh, gratulus. Now there is also an upward drainage from the knee upwards through here. And this is where the perineal nerve splits from the sciatic right and the sciatic nerve goes through the centre at the perineal lateral through that joint between the condyle and epicondyle it comes out the side it goes down now this as the fluid comes up here I felt here there is at the back of the ileum in there. I think you can feel that, can't you? In there. That box. See where the reddening is? Now that is slowed down, it's trying to get into that upward drainage coming up to the top. Now, yeah. that goes up to the top of the iliac spine. And it also, this is from there to there. I have to work on the opposite side from there to there. Um, here, sometimes you can't get the, uh, the proper work to relieve it because this fluid that is down in here from the ilia, sacroiliac joint, if it liquefies, it comes around between the iliac spine and the maximus, or gluteal, gluteus maximus muscles, 
or roots mm -hmm. in the ileum. Then that works around there and goes into two inguinals in the groin. That's shown from the front mm -hmm. and the side. And then there's another one from the sacroiliac joint there, just above trochanter. That goes into the iliac, into the uh, inguinals. Now these two vessels sometimes will come with the upward drainage and interfere with the downward drainage that causes that blockage and the fluid stays there. I felt it as a liquid. I put the hot ferments on it and I've worked around there backwards and forwards and particularly down through there at the top of the trochanter and up here at the um, iliac spine and gluteal maximus. You work that. Uh, when you work it down a little bit, you feel that the gluteus minimum, minimus rather, that is like a pad on the ilium itself. And then over that we've got the gluteus medius. That attaches down here. And that also, that one, the maximus, they are the strengthened muscles that are blocked by this fibrillation. And you lose your traction. And this is where you fall over. I know all about it because I had it 14 months ago. Now, when you do this, it's advisable that is the drainage of that fluid from there. It's going around there instead of going up because of that blockage. You work there, but you don't work this way. Because you're only pushing up, that's the natural drainage, and that's pushing against it. So at times we have better results by working over trochanter and into the blockages up here just below the iliac spine and you give that a squeeze then you work down backwards and forwards to get that moving, then you put the heat on it. Sometimes you put two, two or three lots on. If it is very, very rubbery or very hard, you have to put perhaps two or three pads on there and I need to be there. Mm -hmm. And see, use your flat hand. Once you disturb it, you use your hand in the tissues in the direction of the striations of muscles mm. and you move that obstruction. And you do the same from that side onto here. You don't do that way on this like there. You bring it back and you don't get it properly by doing that. 
you've got to put the pressure on to feel where those vessels are and where, in which direction they go. And that takes a lot of practice. Now we come up here, we've done the legs, hips. Here we've got the obliquus muscles coming from the line of your elbow in the centre of the stomach. You work there. Go lightly down like that, but you put flat hand pressure on those muscles to bring that back so that it can be liquefied to go up through those upper drainage. We come to the backbone, the um, spine and the rib cage. We note there are blockages between the intercostals, particularly feel that. That's where the serratus anterior posterior join onto the rib cage. Feel it? Yeah. There. Yeah. Now that's both sides up to the axillaries. Mm -hmm. Not all axillaries. <laughs> axillary. Axillary. <Yeah. laughs> this is my spell. She's climbing all over me. She's had my document for a couple of weeks and she's having it. So you yeah, pull back flat handed because mm. by raking you hurt. That's right. And you damage. But if you pull it back, you are working on the rubbery substrate, not on injuring the muscles. Yes. And we work through there to bring her back. And then we look at the shoulder muscles. So we come to the, we work from where the inframammary plexus picks up the fluid from the Come around to feel this. Through there. Straight. No, no, no. This way. That's right. Because that goes under the scapula. Feel it? Yeah. They're like little vessels. Consolidated. Right. Right. Now they go down to there. If there's a blockage up here at the axillaries, it will still come under the, the scapula to get into here. And this is where we get our upper pain, back pain in there. Now come around and feel this. Feel that? See that's where it's fighting to go up there, but it has to come in another direction. See where that red stuff is? Feel it? Yes. Yeah. See that's the infraspinalis, mm, infraspinatus. Supraspinatus. Yeah. Yeah, supraspinal. Yeah. I've seen it in for spinatus as well. So if you put both, you're right, both correct. <laughs> Rotator cuff. <laughs> now the axillaries, this is where we get heart problems. Down through here at the inframammary, we can make a better show of it on the other side. You saw, now put your finger on that one. 
I don't know whether you can feel it properly. Come around here. Feel there where my finger is and just go up and down over the rib cage with it. Feel it? Yeah. Definitely. Now that leads to the fibrillation of the phrenic nerve. And that gives us problems with the lungs and the heart. And we work upwards, flat handed. Eric, you can feel pain where I had it, don't you? There's an, see, that one is a vessel We're trying to get under the scapula and it's getting blocked up here, the rhomboids in there. Because in the female, this is where they get the dowager's hump through the trapezium. I felt them there two inches thick. It's been a bit of a problem. But they can be worked out. Now, he would have in there, I'm going down under the trapezium, onto the scalena, lower the scapula muscles, and you will feel down deep. Come around here again. Put your fingers where mine are. You usually use your right hand because you got the thumb that puts it in his ear. Oh, I see. You use this one, do you? Yeah, that's better. Oh, yeah. Now you go deep there and you will feel... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I felt that. That's yeah. quite firm. <laughs> now, yeah. you don't use like that because you give him a thick ear. Okay, good point. <coughs> yeah. Okay. makes sense. And yeah. you also curve your hand into those muscles into those muscles, particularly. Relax. <laughs> we won't do that again. <laughs> now, you go on the other side and do the same on this side. We'll do it? Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Well, we worked on the flat. This part. Around the knee, we work on the side to get between the bone and the muscles, particularly the soleus and the gastrocnemius, because this is where they form the lumps form. And then, as it goes around the knee joint, in there. Blockage then goes under the patella and it fibrillates the perineal nerve and it goes through between the condyle and epicondyle in there because it's supposed to go in here and out through here down and where it splits because I felt down each side there are three branches and each branch has a nerve ending made it in oh, plate. Excuse me. Made it in plate where it diverts from the ventral back through the dorsal to go into the brain. And then the drainage is as before it goes up into the perineum. On this side we've got the lesser trochanter on the femur. This side we've got the tray, greater trochanter on the lateral side. And that appears to have a plexus.
surrounding it that helps to drain the fluids up into the perineum and the glands between the spine and the viscera. And then we do the other leg. We do the side work again and the upward. Through there. This is where the sciatic nerve perineal split. Around there. This is very prominent. Heather, feel it. See where that reddening is? You'll feel the lumps. Mm-hmm. You have fun with the kids? Mm. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't tell you off today. Mm. I did. Now I work both ways with pressure because the muscles go deep. Yeah. And you have to work between the muscles to get the detritus, the foreign particulate, to move with the work. See how the fat one, this one, is a bit different to a lot of others. This in some, and it goes to there, there's a bit down there. This one goes right through. See where the reddening is? Mm -hmm. As soon as you see that, you know that there's trouble there. This is where we work so that we can get into the ingredients <coughs> in the groin. I work upwards here because this is an upward drainage. Males as well as females are subject to breast cancer. I noticed the other day in paper where there was a man died with breast cancer. There, feel that. Oh, you can feel it too. We have a plexus each side of the umbilicus. You yeah, feel that? It's a bit prominent. That goes between the ilium and the Downward. Mm. Yeah. 
Okay, I think I got that here's a bearing on diabetes and alterations and liver problems. Right there, but we get those when he's on his back. But it worked? Yeah, it worked just now. To help it, the liquefier to go into the upward drainage, it would work. Taking the nerve out of there and put it up there. Mm. That's painful. And all they've got to do is clean that stuff out. There. And that goes down. That hurts a bit there, doesn't it? He's not talking. Is he conscious? Yes. Mm. He's swearing, I think. Yeah, I think. Where Meditating. Everybody blocks up in that part. That's just down below the elbow where the muscles join onto the bone. And then down here. There's a cross muscle here, which are the upward ones, and then we come here where the radialis medianus, those three fingers, into here, into here, and a part of this is there. And now the ulnaris come through here, up there, through there, up through there, the upper germ, the other, and through there, and it comes into the centre, which we can get as he's on his back. And that gives us the <gasps> carpal tunnel syndrome and also the joint locks. Finishes that side. Yeah, turn over. By working here, while he's on his back, we can do the feet a little bit better. We've done all the bottom, but we didn't do the top. And we can do around the malleolus. This is where the drop by drainage goes. Around here, around the patella, under the ligament, 
into the adductor hiatus. Come up here, we follow the grattlers up to the surfaces pubis. That hurts a bit, doesn't it? Now yeah, I'm on one of the inguinal ligaments, well, inguinal uh, glands. There's the other one in there. Now yeah, this one is the bottom one. Then there's the grattlers and then this one to underneath in there on the top. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, now we work on where the glands come from the back from the sacroiliac joint those two glands are in there right in the groin and they hurt when they fall then there's a femoral in here that's where the sheath comes out from the nerve there. and uh, blood and lymphatic vessel that goes down the leg. But these hamstrings is where you get to the cramp. In here, at the edge of a hard seat, and up here where they and they all split from the sciatic nerve. Now, I'll tell you this leg on this side because of the you can see then that you can do the legs both sides mm. or from one side if necessary. Sometimes if I've got a patient that yeah, carries a lot of weight, I do the legs on both sides, from this side to here, from that side to here, because when they carry weight, there is a lot of condition there that you can't get in to the muscles properly but you can curve your fingers a bit more and get in between the muscles to get down to the bottom where the problem is. And you can also work on, on the inguinals and the groin and the femoral. But you can't work inside. You have to go around the other side to do it. And I'm 
on the femoral there and look at it hurts a little bit there it is What I do when I do up around the top of the leg, I just go down a little bit, find out where the real problem is. There you uh -huh. go. Down towards the symphysis pubis, and then I work flat hand because this part is very painful if you go down deeper. And you work into the base of the abdominal cavity and you work upwards into the perineum. most of the work on the sides and the back I don't need to do very much in the front on the legs I can cover them up you right? yeah. we work upwards we turn it over and we do this part of the rest that I couldn't do before this is where the ulnar is comes into the centre of the hand that causes a blockage down through here it gives us carpal tunnels in Rome and it also blocks the rest both sides there and then there now we work upwards and you feel see there On this side we work upwards, downwards, between the muscles of the arm, where we clean the pathways of the two nerves, radialis, medialis and all their branches and twigs. And we come up here between the acromioclavicular joint and under clavicle where there are about eight muscles join on to the acromion and the scapula and we work in here through there and that releases a certain amount so that the fluid can go into the subclavian vein. across the stomach transversely the top of the pubis come to the symphysis pubis where we've got the cream after muscle that attaches to the penis if that blocks the old boys can't stand up they bend over like a banana yeah, down and there. Can you feel that? Okay. In there. 
Now that fluid coming down from here goes around there and goes into the perineum. In here where we feel the blockage from the upward drainage and the inframammary, we have to put to come in underneath the pectorals to go into the subclavian. Yeah, if that's blocked, that's where you can feel those block vessels that come down here through the parasternals the forward bone down through the stomach to the umbilicus both sides and that goes into the femoral nerve inguinal but you work generally if there's anything concerning the liver Penix? Yes, Penix out Yeah 30 years ago or something. Then the duodenum, the jejunum, the pancreas, the stomach. Now through the pancreas there is a vessel that goes from the spleen through the pancreas into the duodenum and the jejunum. If there's very much blockage through there, that enters the duodenum and that's where ulcers form. There is where the ulcers form. I don't go through them, but I go around them. Because an ulcer is like any other growth that has the treatise in and the microbes that send out other microbes to kill the healthy cells around it so that this ulcer can grow. Then you go around it and that prevents those microbes from killing the cells and that the main vessel dies. They implode, they don't explode by exploding it on the outside coming out, but it implodes and goes into the intestine. Then when that explodes, implodes rather, the fecal matter is a black frothy sludge that lasts for a few hours and then it comes back to normal. Now to do the top of the shoulder where the pain is at the top of these muscles you work across the roots of the muscles
you go transversely across the chest. Now we come on the other side. On the rest joint, up into the hand. We work upwards, downwards, upwards, downwards, where we push and pull. Orbital fissure, not the supraspinatus. Intra supraorbital fissure. Infraorbital fissure. The carancle. Onto the temporal bone. And down here with the rami of the mandible. There is an opening there where the vessel takes the fluid from here down and that goes into the pharyngeal tonsil between the rami of the mandible. On both sides. Clyde a mastoid, that's all, both sides, 
and an ace and and then the six occipital bone where the roots of the scalinae lower the scapulae join on to the base of the skull. Yeah, you get to know how many minutes heats it adequately. Are you want to put that on top? It's better to have them too hot and not hot enough because they cool down very quickly. Yeah. Actually, it needs another one across there to cover the arms as well. One more. Oh, good. Okay, yeah, we can put where do you want that one? Down. Down. Around his head. Make use yes, of this probably well. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. And then we have a smaller one to put over that part when we need it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Maybe just to finish you off, put one of them back in and we'll do that top of the head. I did for the glaucoma patients was now Arnie you could feel the pull on the eye nerve mm -hmm. as I move it at the back mm -hmm and you work around the orbit in there you work around the orbit in there because in this area we can feel the vessels coming down from here to drain into that foramen if that foramen is blocked that goes into the sinuses instead of into the pharyngeal tonsil. Now here and then get your finger under It's good, doesn't it? Something different happened to your eyes. <coughs> now, why I do that, Arnie, is when you move the eyeball, the nerve at the back has 1,200,000 fibres in it. 
Yeah, we've got the lymphatic vessel going through and we've got the blood vessel as well. If the lymphatic vessel is blocking, it means that the 1,200,000 fibres are not sending the impulse through from the brain where it comes out of the roots at the base of the occipital. It goes up to the foramen magnum, it goes around the foramen magnum and in anterior section of that brain there is what we call the uh, optic chiasma. That sends the right nerves into the left eye, the left nerves into the right eye. Now one uh, plastic um, skeleton I saw over there, it had in front, just underneath, in there, it had the optic foramen. So how could it go from the optic chiasma behind the eye, up over the eye, and back again to go into the back of the eye. Didn't make sense. It had to go straight. But this is what I do with mine at times. Then I look in there, if through there, Eric, if there's that you put your finger very gently on that where my finger is you feel a little clicky feeling yep. now it's all you do with it you go across it with plenty of fluid uh, plenty of grease mm. and you work both sides that one now that one you feel that one it's got more. <coughs> In there, you run your finger along the bottom part of the... Yeah. Not too hard. Through to the yeah, caruncle. I can feel it. Feel it? Yeah. Now that's got more, that left eye is more effective than what that is. Mm. With that, feels like little strings you, going there. I, I do that on Betty's eye. There you work like so, you, so that you can pull that in there. Now you feel in there, there where that vessel goes down. Can you get through? Yeah, that was a squeaky voice. Now you feel in there, there is a river raised as it goes into the yeah. nose. There's a bit of a raised lump there. Yeah. Now that's not normal. That's a like a bit. tough mm. uh, rubber. That should not be there because he's got the extra drainage here blocking on that gland, the lacrimal gland. On this side, there is a gland in there. If you've got dry eyes, you work into the orbit. There. Now this one there's a little bit of a click. You've put your finger in there and you will feel just a faint mm. right at the edge of the orbit, like at the yep. side of the orbit. Now there's a dryness there. That lacrimal gland that's up there, I saw in the body works in London that that lacrimal gland had five little glands 
very mighty, very small, that constantly feeds the fluid across mm. the eyes. Now, if that's constantly moving, this one, if it's blocked at the caruncle and the fluid doesn't get through into that foramen, this comes out as tears. Mm because that's what Betty's is doing. She's got that part is blocked where they operated on her. Yeah, yeah before they, then it's blocked. And she had it before then because she only had the blockage then. What we find out, we might be able to help her and next time I come down, we'll do it. I want to see what there is there. but. That's okay, but that's how you treat eyes. If they took a cancerous growth out of there? Anything. That will clear it. And then you put the heat over it mm. two, three times. And that will liquefy that stuff because it's close to the surface. Do you want heat on there now? Well, we better put one on, I think. Where's that little one? Just give it another minute. But to do an eye, you have to be a little bit higher than this. You must keep yourself so that you can hold yourself steady. Otherwise, you'll be poking, and you shouldn't be poking. And, uh, that's what I, I, I just yeah. do it on a chair. And that chair is only designed for 46 kilos. <laughs> But I've never taught, never showed people. I don't, I didn't know that they had enough knowledge of anatomy, physiology, to be able to do it without damage. Don't it wriggle around too much on the chair? Hmm. You? Don't wriggle on the chair. Oh, it'll fall, will it? It's only designed to take 46 kilos. Oh. And I think you'd be about 50. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya, Tanya bought those chairs for the office, then looked underneath and said, "For someone to take." Oh, I can't even sit on there then. <laughs> they could take up to 50, 55. Only one of my legs can. <clears throat> yeah, I don't sit on them. I'm 84. on and that gives you relief whatever's in there blocking is liquefied mm -hmm. and it flows out it flows through the proper channels do you work on your own eyes yeah yeah that's it very good look at that quarter to two how good is that honey well done <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> I can still about four yeah. hours <laughs>